break the power of family curses off your life. Jimmy Evans shares how you can live in the covering of the bloodline blessing and change the destiny of your life and family. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Well, do you sometimes feel like you're waiting for the other shoe to drop? Does it feel like you're constantly under spiritual attack? Well, there is a blessing that most believers don't realize they have access to. With the help of today's guest, you'll discover how it can transform your reality. But before we get to that, joining me around the table is to have Lynn Ford. I am very excited about this topic because this has been the last 10 years of breaking generational curses and not taking them into my future. So I can't wait to hear what he has and to say. Because you want your kids to be blessed. Because I and want, you want my children, future children, children, and children, children, children. Exactly. Yeah, so Dorothy exciting. Newton. Hello, hello. This is so good. You know, I used to believe the enemy's lie about, because as a child, I witnessed a lot of abuse and then I was in abusive marriage. But I am telling you as a living testament to God's greatness, that generational curses can be broken. It can be broken, amen. Yes. Rachel Ann Brown. I know I want the very best for my boys. So anything yeah. I can learn of how I can be better, how yeah. we can just give them the best that I can, I, I want to. Yes, so. Rebecca Lamb Weiss, the Lord wants us to be blessed and wants our family to be blessed. Mm -hmm. The whole system was designed for blessing. It was within the fall of man that curse came into it. But the mm -hmm. thing is, it says, I put before you life and death you know, curse or blessing, choose life, choose blessing. So we can choose life yes. and blessing and break yes. that off in our lives Amen. and have our children be set up for an even better life. Amen. Cindy Murdoch. Yeah. And Jesus died and shed his blood that yeah. we could be set free from yeah. the curse. I'm a product of a grandfather that broke that in our family and went on to have my dad, well, seven children, six girls and a boy, and then he went on to have me, and, and now I'm passing to my children. But I mean, there was, there was definitely was a generational curse, and it was broken. Yes. And uh, we're going to talk about that today. Well, he is a sought-after speaker, author, and one of our favorite guests here at the table. Please welcome Jimmy Evans. Hello. All right. Welcome. Good, Good to be here. You. Thank you. You know, the bloodline blessing it's such an interesting topic. A lot of uh, churches, you don't ever hear this preached. What, how, how did the Lord kind of bring it up and, and speak to you about you addressing know, it? Um, I went to the doctor one day and I, I had my mom and dad and my brothers and I all went to the same doctor. And my doctor was telling me, um, warning me about all the things I was probably gonna get. And he said, oh. yeah, well, you know, and that's what doctors yeah, do. I mean, Because yeah. they want to know your history of your family, yeah. what diseases. Yeah. Well, and he had all my mother, mom and dad and brothers sitting right there. And he said, well, you know, you're probably going to get cancer and you're probably going to get this. You're probably... <laughs> and it bothered oh, me. Yeah. And, I, and I just thought about that. And I thought, I, just, I don't want to live my life just waiting to get sick. Yeah. You know? And, Did he and say he, something about your heart as well? No, no just we don't have any heart disease, but okay. it's cancer, oh. uh, you know, uh, uh, Alzheimer's, all high blood pressure, those kind of things. Yes. So especially cancer. My dad had six cancers before he died. Oh, so um, I was reading uh, one day in Galatians, and, and I, I want to get to the scripture in Galatians in just a minute. But this goes back to Genesis because G uh, Galatians talks about Abraham, the blessing of Abraham. And Genesis 17, God says, I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations. This is a bloodline blessing on the Jewish people for an everlasting covenant uh, to be God to you and your descendants after you. Also, I give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you're a stranger in the land, all the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession. So Israel is a nation and also a, a land. It's a people and a land. So God makes a bloodline blessing to Abraham. Well, the interesting thing about this, this is Genesis 17. Genesis 3 is where God pronounced a curse on Adam and Eve. And so the, we, we had a blessing until they sinned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then a curse came on the human race. Then God steps in and takes this one man out and says to him, I'm going to bless your generations as an everlasting. Well, the Jews are blessed. 
Right. You know, the yeah. reason a lot of people hate the Jews is they're just better. Yeah. You know, there are, more, there are very, a tiny amount of Jews percentage-wise in the world. Uh, they have more Nobel laureates, more mm -hmm. tech Invention. geniuses, more scientists, more nuclear scientists. Mm -hmm. they're, they, they control Hollywood. They control the finances. And that's why Hitler hated them is because they, they were just better. Well, you can hate them or you can want to be like them. <laughs> you know, I, you know, I, I, I want to tap into whatever exactly. they got, you know. Yeah. And so Galatians... We can be adopted in, right? I want, I want to get grafted into that. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't want to be jealous of it. I want it. <laughs> yeah. And so Galatians 3, I was reading this one morning, and this is where this whole thing came from. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, curses everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through yes. faith. Now that, I read that one day, I thought, the blessing of Abraham. Mm -hmm. We said, well, what's the blessing of Abraham? Genesis 24, 1. Abraham was old, well advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And when your kids are born, that's what you want. You want yes. them to live a long life and you want them to be blessed. And all that. You know, if you're 90% blessed, that stinks. Right. You know, if the 10% that's not blessed, that's, that's not good. So we, God wants total blessing. So it says here, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the non-Jews. So here's what that means. Mm -hmm. What the Jews have, Jesus came to give it. So people would say, um, why did Jesus die on the cross? Okay. And, and the answer would be to pay for our sins. That is a true answer, incomplete. They would also say, Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins and break the curse of sin. That's mm -hmm. a true answer that's incomplete. Mm -hmm. Here's the answer of why Jesus died on the cross. To pay for our sins, to break the curse of sin, and to graft us into the genetic blessing of Abraham, mm -hmm. which is both a physical blessing yes. and a spiritual blessing. Yeah. And so God wants us to be totally blessed. Well, the, the problem with that is, I mean, that, that's, it's a phenomenal truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I pray it every single day. I prayed it this morning. Is I pray the bl bl blessing of Abraham over Karen and me, over our family, so on and so forth, long life, health, blessing. So a lot of people, that's the good news. The good news is that Jesus died to graft us in to the bloodline blessing of Abraham. The bad news is most people are waiting on a curse. Mm. Most people are sitting around. So I, I told you the story of the, of the, my doctor and what he said to me. Um, cancer, a lot of people, cancer runs in their family. Uh, Angelina Jolie, the actress, had a, a preemptive double mastectomy right. because cancer runs in her family and she, you know, like that. That's what her mother died from. Yeah. Yeah, it was breast and, cancer. And uh, blindness, heart disease, mental problems, deafness, blood, di or, uh, blood diseases, uh, uh, MS, MD, diabetes, birth defects, crippling arthritis, and a lot of that. David Cassidy, the, uh, the Partridge family, so a lot of people watch him over too young. Nobody knows who that is, but I do, because <laughs> oh. I, I had his poster up in my room. So, oh, oh my gosh, Tony, yeah. that is terrible. <laughs> so he got dementia. He was, he was uh, uh, diagnosed with dementia, and his father was named Jack Cassidy. He was also an entertainer. And when he was diagnosed with uh, dementia, he said, uh, I knew it was coming. Wow. I've been expecting it. Wow. You know, it's just, it, I'm waiting. I've got a target on my chest and I'm waiting on the curse. There was a woman uh, on television one day and I was watching her. She's maybe 40 years old, attractive woman, and she was talking about her family. And here was the conversation. Uh, my grandmother and all her sisters died of breast cancer. My mother and all her sisters died of breast cancer. Both my sisters have died of breast cancer and I've got three daughters. Wow. In our family, we don't call them breasts. We call them bombs because we're waiting for them to go off and kill us. Oh, wow. And you think about you think about that family, and in one side of my family, there's kidney disease. Uh, one of my aunts was one of the first people to go on dialysis, and all through that family, one, they're the most wonderful people in the world. Kidney disease through that whole side of the family, and so here, here's here's my premise in this, Joni, and that is, you just can't convince me that's God's will, right? That Jesus Christ died on the cross so we could wait all of our lives for a curse to hit. Right. Or have a genetic curse go through our family. It didn't happen. That's not, that's not the blessing of Abraham. No, it's not. And so you see, in, in, the, in the sense of the Jews, you see this genetic blessing. Now, there are, there are conditions to the blessing because the, you know, the Jews have had ups and downs through their history because of their behavior. But God's desire is that we live in blessing. And I want to talk about what the answer is. This is Galatians 3 again. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles, the non-Jews, in Christ Jesus, 
that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The Holy Spirit ministers the blessing of Abraham. It, when it talks about the Holy Spirit coming through faith, the, the purpose of the Holy Spirit in our lives is to minister to us yes. all the blessings of God. Mm -hmm. And so, but we have to expect it. Well, don't go anywhere. We've got more with Jimmy Evans in just a moment. Stay right there. Are you trapped in a cycle of pain? Often, past experiences and family history can open the door to constant spiritual attack. Break the cycle with the Bloodline Blessing, the exclusive two-disc DVD teaching and prayer cards featuring Jimmy Evans. Overcome chronic family issues and connect to the Bloodline that has the power to change your future. To get your copy, call now or go online and start living in peace and freedom today. Well, if Jesus brought peace, freedom, and blessing to us through his work on the cross, why are so many believers struggling? How do we know if we are not living under the blessing? And the answer begins by understanding the effect of curses that are locked into generations. So I know you have uh, shared some of the reasons why that we can be experiencing a curse or we don't understand about the bloodline blessing. A lot of people are just ignorant, don't understand that's right. that that's even in the word of God. For people watching who say, I want to pray that over my family and believe it, how would they do that? Well, first of all, you renounce your physical bloodline. Mm -hmm. Bless your family, but Lord, I renounce, for me as an example, I said, I renounce the Evans bloodline. I'm no longer a part of that bloodline in the name of Jesus. And I now accept the bloodline of Abraham as my bloodline. From this point forward, and what that means is, if Abraham didn't get it, I don't want it. <laughs> if Abraham had it, that's what I want. Mm -hmm. I'm expecting everything of Abraham to come into my life. And so if there's a genetic curse, cancer is an example of that, is I renounce, I renounce the Evans bloodline and all the cancer in it. Yes. All, all the curses in it, all the heart disease in it, all the, everything that's in that, I renounce that. I no longer expect that. That is no longer my bloodline. I accept, accept the bloodline of, of Abraham. And so every day when I pray, uh, I just say, I receive the bloodline of Abraham again today. Yes. Blessing, victory, grace, favor, long life, all these things. Every day I pray that over me and Karen and our family. And so it's something that changes the way that you think. Yeah. Yeah. And rather than expecting, and, and so you just literally just change bloodlines. Yeah. And, and what I said earlier about the, the certain sins, if we, have, if we have a sin in our lives, like the ones that I'm talking about that, it mitigates the blessing. Be because there's, I'm, I'm inviting something into my life that's going to destroy part of the blessing. It doesn't mean that God doesn't love me, he loves me. But for us to be able to live in the full blessing, in other words, Abraham wasn't anti-Semitic. He wasn't rebellious to authority. He, he wasn't sexually immoral. He, all the things I listed there, that wasn't Abraham. That's not who he was. So you can't live unlike him and have his blessing. There has to be. Oh, that's good. But it, the, we have to yeah. walk by grace. We, we are not saved by works. We're saved by grace. But remember here, Jesus said, I'm going to give to every man according to his works. We're saved by grace, but we're judged by our works. So what we do is very important. But I just think change your mindset and stop expecting, stop living with a target on your chest where you're thinking, well, I'm, one of these days I'm gonna you know, go senile, one of these days I'm gonna get cancer. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna do that. No. I'm expecting to live a long, healthy life because yes. I've been grafted into the bloodline of Abraham. That's so good. I went back in to the doctor again and he was talking about, you know, because of your bloodline, because of your genetics, this, this, this. And I was just kinda, I, he was a good doctor, I like him, but here's what I was thinking. Doctor, I've changed bloodlines. Mm. Yes. And this is what I'm saying. Everybody watching, I hope you yes. listen to what I'm saying. The Evans family bloodline is polluted. It's polluted with sin. Uh, my great-grandfather was a bootlegger in Tennessee. The way we got to Texas was my, my great-grandfather had to flee Tennessee in the middle of the night to keep from getting arrested, and he came to Texas. That's so We didn't get here the good way. Wild, wild west. <laughs> it was a horse thieves, all kinds of problems in my family. So my bloodline is polluted, okay? There's only one bloodline that isn't. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's the bloodline yes. of Abraham. Yes. It is the genetic, that God blessed his bloodline. And Jesus came to pay for our sins, to break the curse of sin, and to graft us into yes. the bloodline of Abraham. So now we talk about blood diseases. I'm the only person in my family without a blood disease. Mm. 
Okay. Thank you, God. Yeah, it, well, so I'm saying, I, so when the doctor's talking to me, I don't rebuke him, you know, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but while while he's talking on, on the inside, I'm just thinking. I was gonna say you are yeah. in your mind though. You're yeah. just talking Absolutely. to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> what, what I'm saying in what I'm saying in my mind is, doctor, excuse me. Mm, I'm yeah. not of that Evans bloodline. Exactly. I'm the and so every morning part of my prayer is I receive the blessing of Abraham today. Yes. Is it, why wouldn't you? Yeah. And so Jesus came to graft us into the bloodline of blessing. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to be able to be grafted into the bloodline, I want to talk just a minute about our behavior because there are things that can violate this. So anyone watching right now, the only thing you have to do is say I I change bloodlines. Yes. You know, whatever bloodline of your family, and you love your family and you forgive your family, this isn't about that. This is about just simply saying, why in the world would I accept a bloodline full of curses when I can receive by grace a bloodline full of blessing? Mm -hmm. So that's what God's desire is. So, so understand the full purpose of the cross. Surrender the Lordship of Jesus. Now, it says in Christ Jesus that the blessing of Abraham comes in Christ Jesus. Well. In the history of Israel, when you look at the Jews, the if you read the Old Testament, it's like this. There was a king that arose that obeyed God and God blessed him. There was a king that arose who rebelled against God and then the curses came upon him, so on and so forth. And so I want to talk about a few of the sins that can violate the bloodline blessing of Abraham. The first one is anti-Semitism. And so uh, behavior against the Jews. In Genesis 12, 3, God said, I will bless those who cur bless you. I will curse those who curse you. And so anti-Semitism, there's a, I mentioned the book on here many times, Eye to Eye by Bill Koenig. And uh, it's 126 cases of historic natural disasters that have hit the United States as we were trying to pressure Israel to give up land. Mm -hmm. In Joel chapter 3, God says, I'm entering the judgment with the nations in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. That's the valley between the Temple Mount and the Mount of Olives. On account of my people, my heritage, Israel, you've scattered them around the nations and you've divided up my land. Yeah. So the United States for decades has had a policy we do right now under the Biden administration. We're trying to force Israel to go back to pre-1967 boundaries. And every single time we have done something to try to get them to give up land, there has been a historic natural disaster hit America. Hurricane Katrina happened five days after we physically forced Israel out of the Gaza Strip. And so when the Bible says, I will bless those who bless you, I'll curse those who curse you, one of the things you really need to work hard at doing is blessing the Jews. Yes. They're yes. special people. A Jew cannot be saved without receiving Jesus, but they're special by covenant. Mm -hmm. And God made an everlasting covenant with them, and it's something that we need to, to be careful of. Another sin is rebellion to authority. This is Revelation or Romans 13. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except from God and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers not are, are not a terror to good works but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good and you will have praise for the same. And what I say to people is authority isn't cramping my style. Authority is covering my life. When you're under, when you're under authority, your parents' authority, spiritual authority, you know, your boss at work, you're under, you're like this. When you're out from under authority, you're like this. So James 4 says, submit to God, then resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Mm -hmm. And so when you're not submitted to God, you're uncovered. You're out here and you have no authority. You, in the kingdom of God, you only have as much authority as you're under. And so first submit to God, then resist the devil and he'll flee from you. But what if you're in rebellion? You're, you're, you're a target. You have no authority and you're, so a lot of people would say, I want the bloodline blessing. Well, you have to be under authority. Yeah. You have to respect authority. Mm -hmm. Another one is involvement in the occult. Now remember Solomon was the wisest person except Jesus ever lived, built this huge kingdom and it fell because of his involvement in the occult. Yeah. And so um, I had a, uh, my assistant came in my office one day when I first became a pastor and she said, there's a couple that has something evil in their home and they would like for you to come get it out. And it pissed off, well, if, you know, and I don't have, how'd they get my number? You know? Weird. <laughs> and so uh, they were not saved and they did not go to church. And I drove up to this house and I knocked on the door and the man came to the door and I said, so do you have something in your home? You want me to get out? He said, yeah. So he, real nice people. And so I it went in, it was, a, it was a mobile home. And I went in their mobile home and I said, do you mind if I walk through your house? And he said, no, not at all. And so I walked in their house and I went to the right and it was like the kitchen and back in their master bedroom. There's nothing there. And I walked through the living room into the other side of the house and it was the kids' bedroom. So I went in the final bedroom and there was something evil. I mean, you could just, the hair on the back of your neck stand up. 
And I walked in, there was these posters on the wall, these very demonic kind of posters on the wall, pentagrams, all that kind of stuff. And I said, whose bedroom is this? And it was like a 14-year-old girl standing there, and she said, that's my bedroom. And I said, honey, how long have those posters been on your wall? She said, two weeks. My friend gave them to me. And I said, how long has something evil been in your house? She said, two weeks. Wow. And I said, they, those posters, see, demo demons can come in through objects. And so she was, she had these posters. And a lot of people right now are watching all kinds of horrible horror movies she, and yeah. books and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so I said, you mind if we take those down? So we took them down and threw, t tore them up and threw them outside. Immediately it left. And the whole family got saved. The whole family. Wow. I was uh, praying at a presbytery uh, one night. There was a couple being prayed over in this presbytery service. And uh, when I was watching this couple being prayed over, I saw the Lord walk up and grab this woman's face. The Lord, the Lord walked up and grabbed this woman's face and was talking to her, real down in her face, talking to her. And the Lord said, I want you to walk up and take her face and I want you to tell her what I tell you to tell her. So I walked up later and I said, you, you mind if I hold your face? And she said, no, and I told, held her face. I didn't know what I was gonna say, I had no idea. Yeah. As soon as I held her face, uh, I said to her, you have a lot of uh, spiritual, spirituality in your family and a lot of it's not good. There's spiritual darkness in your family. And here's what the Lord would say to you. It will never happen to you and your children. Mm. And she starts crying. Well, I had no idea what I said, so I went and sat down. So after the service was over, she came and got me. And she said, you mean to tell you what you said? And I said, yeah, what did I say? And she said, I come out of, of generations of the cult. Mm. There's never been a firstborn child in our family. There's never been a firstborn male in our family live past the age of 18. Mm. And I have three sons and my oldest just turned 17. And since the day he was born, the devil's told me he's gonna take that child. Mm -hmm. And she said, last week I was walking at the park and the devil came to me and said, I'll have that boy before he turns 18. And I walk up to her and I say to her, it'll never happen to you and your boys. Wow. Now that boy is now 25 years old. Mm -hmm. Amazing, okay. powerful. She, the, the, the occult, she said, I come out of generations of occultism. The, the occult is a curse. The occult, bring, the devil only wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Right. And so another one is a lifestyle of, of sexual immorality. This is Revelation 2 where Jesus is talking. This is New Testament where Jesus is talking to a church. And he says, to the angel of church at Thyatira write, these things says the Son of God who has eyes like a flame of fire, his feet are like fine brass. I know your works, love, service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality and she did not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into a sickbed and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation unless they repent of their deeds. I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and hearts and I will give to each one of you according to your works. And so all of us sin. You, you don't get the bloodline blessing by being a good person. All of us sin. But there are certain sins like the sin of, you know, uh, anti-Semitism or rebellion or things like that. There are certain sins that God is just saying, it violates the grace of God in my life. And when you have overt sexual immorality, a lifestyle of sexual immorality, God says, I can't bless you when you're doing that. And there's one other, and we've talked about forgiveness in another show, but it's hate and unforgiveness. Because remember when Jesus was telling that story about the man who had been forgiven billions and he wouldn't forgive a few thousand. It says, then his master called him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt. Should you not have also had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And the master was anger, angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due him. So Jesus says, so my heavenly father also will do to each of you if you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Anti-Semitism, rebellion to authority, involvement in the occult, lifestyle of sexual immorality, hate and unforgiveness. The bloodline blessing of Abraham is worth giving all that up for. Yes. yes. That's so good. You know, I'd be remiss if I didn't give people an opportunity to pray today. So I wonder if you just take a moment and tie in um, praying the prayer of salvation along with receiving okay. the bloodline blessing. Yeah. If you want to receive the bloodline blessing and Jesus along with it, I just want you pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord, I renounce, Lord, I renounce sin in my life. Sin in my life. 
and I renounce, and I renounce my physical bloodline, my physical bloodline, and, all the, that come with it. and all the curses that come with it. I love my family. I love my family. I bless my family. I bless my family. But I'm no longer a part of that bloodline. But I'm no longer a part of that bloodline. I receive. I receive the bloodline of Abraham. The bloodline of Abraham. And every blessing that comes with it. And every blessing that comes with it. And that is my future. And that, that is, is my future. future. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I submit to you. I submit to you. I invite you into my heart. I invite you into my heart. I renounce my sin. I renounce my sin. And I confess you as my Lord. And I confess you as my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. Forgive me of all my sins. Forgive, Forgive me of all my sins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me the grace to change. Give me the grace to change. Give me the gift of eternal life. Give me the gift of eternal life. I commit the rest of my life to you. I commit the rest of my life to you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So De Havilland, how freeing was that for you today? Oh, I just feel like I've been delivered, set free. <laughs> you know, I, I'll just say this, my family, we, had, we must have had someone in the bloodline that changed the narrative because all of us are married college got when we had so many dropouts divorce was rampant and so I do believe it can take one person to yes, change the right. narrative right. and so I just feel so grateful for this teaching I believe we need to hear it more mm -hmm. in the church so we're not carrying these expecting that target exactly. on our chest so thank you yeah. so much so quickly just go over one more time those things that will stop the bloodline blessing from flowing into our lives there are there's specific things the Bible says will stop it if you're not if you're doing these things it you're going to open yourself up yeah and when you look back to why why the curse came in the first place this is why anti-semitism rebellion to authority involvement in the occult a lifestyle of sexual immorality and hate and unforgiveness that's why it starts and even if i say i want the blessing of abraham and i get it if I adopt these things into my life, it will it will mitigate it or it will stop it. So those are the things. Again, that's not who Abraham was. And that's not who Jesus is. It says right. the blessing comes in Christ Jesus. Yes. So we can't say that we're in Christ Jesus and I want the blessing of Abraham, but I'm going to hate everybody. Mm -hmm. you know, Or I'm going to practice the occult. But the blessing of Abraham is so precious to me. Uh, I want to be healthy. I want to be blessed. And I want that for my grandchildren, my children and grandchildren. Yes. Yes. And I don't, want, I don't want to put that at risk with this. So I'm just saying, and, and a lot of people, when you look back in your family, if you look carefully, if there is a curse, because of the behavior of a grandfather or great-grandfather or something like that, we can be the person that stops it and stops the curse and begins the blessing and change the entire family. All right, well, we are out of time. I want you to remember that God has a plan for your life. And it's to give you a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11, Jesus broke the power of every curse through the cross but we must believe in that power and blessing that comes through him. If you're watching today and you want to proclaim this bloodline blessing, maybe you prayed that prayer with us. I know we pray, all of us prayed it. We're like, we're getting in on this for sure. You want to pray it over you and your family. That's why that toll-free number's on your screen. Our prayer partners are standing by, always ready to pray with you, encourage you. I want to thank Jimmy Evans for joining us. Be sure to pick up a copy of his teaching, The Bloodline Blessing. It's available now. And for more, of course, you can visit him online at exomarriage.com. If today's talk has touched your heart, let us know. Leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. We always love hearing from you, our viewers. I'm excited about what God has for you in the days ahead. I'm, we're just going to believe for all those curses to be broken in Jesus' name and for you to walk in that bloodline blessing. And you don't have to receive uh, the negative that's been passed down through your family it can be made new in Jesus' name. So you just received that today. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Jimmy. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.